When Mary McLeod Bethune started a school for girls in 1904 with $1.50 and five students, it would have been hard for her to imagine what it would become. Today, Bethune-Cookman University sits on 85 acres in Daytona Beach, boasting an endowment of nearly $50 million. It was her dream to have this school to continue, and I think she would be more than happy if she could see that it's still a living and breathing entity and that we're producing scholars and just wonderful, wonderful people that are contributing to society. From a young age, Bethune seemed destined to be an educator. Her parents instilled in her a strong work ethic, and they also encouraged her to get her education. Census record shows that she was reading by the time that she was four years old. Bethune moved to Florida in 1899 and settled in Daytona five years later. As her school grew, so did the belief in those who backed her. She had a way of getting people to buy into her dream, and so basically she contacted the likes of Thomas White, a white sewing machine, and the family that owned Coca-Cola at the time, and different other benefactors that were here. A lot of them wealthy white people that would come to Florida for summer vacation. And they bought into her dream. They encouraged her, they put financial resources and backed her, and now we have Bethune Cookman University. Bethune's house, built in the early 1900s, sits on the northeast side of campus. It has been designated a U.S. National Historic Landmark and is open to daily tours. So this is Doc Bethune's room. Doc Bethune was born July 10, 1875, and she died May 18, 1955, at the age of 79. She was the 15 out of 17 children, and she was the only one in her family that was born with the education. She actually taught herself how to read and write. So here you have a picture of Samuel and Patsy McLeod. That's Doc Bethune's parents. And then below you have the cabin she was born in in Maysville, South Carolina on July 10th, 1875. So the cabin is through there. It's just a replica, it's not original. You can actually go and visit the cabin. Situated next to the house is where you'll find Bethune's final resting place. Bethune's solitary grave is open for students and others on campus to walk through. Bethune dedicated her life to education beating the odds of being an African-American daughter of former slaves at the turn of the 20th century. Words cannot describe that, and I don't know another woman that was able to do what she did during that time, but she did it. <laughs>